What's it like to start as a lecturer in a new institution, in a different place, with different students? Here are some tips just to help you think about how to approach this task. The first thing is, you know your stuff. You're appointed to your position because you know your stuff. You've succeeded in writing about it, researching it, publishing about it, all sorts of things you might have done. So the things you're going to teach students, you've got your own head around pretty well by now. Students, though, are different. Students are probably different from each other, different from what you might have been like as a student. Remember, you were a successful student who will be a lecturer now. So when you've got a class of students, you've got a lot of different abilities, a lot of different outlooks, a lot of different attitudes in a room. And what we want to try to do is to make it worth the while of everyone who comes to every session, if we can do this. Make it interesting for them. You probably remember boring lectures yourself and survived them, but you will remember the ones where there was a spark, where there was a bit of passion, a bit of drama, the ones that you really learned from. And the more we can do that for today's students, the better we can. But a lot of it is in preparation. You can't wing it at the last minute, especially at first in a teaching career. You need your props. Your props might be slides, might be bits of paper, might be exhibits, might be things to pass around. But the props also are questions you put in the student's mind or you gain from the students, questions you ask them or questions they ask you. The more question and answer there is in a session, the more dialogue has taken place, the more they will remember what's going on. If one student asks a question, probably several of the students will be thinking of the same question and eager to hear the answer. If one student asks a question and other students already know it, they're feeling rather good because they already know the answer. But the ones they don't yet know are learning points. So the more dialogue you can cause to happen, even in a lecture room, the better. It's very useful to make eye contact, to look at students. If you look at them and smile, they'll often smile back. They're not nearly as frightening as you might think they would be. Timing is fairly critical, especially if it's a 12 to 1 lecture and everyone is hungry. It's well worth making sure that the end of a session is very clear to the students and it's not just stopping midstream. There's nothing worse than a performance that stops midstream. So when you see the minutes approaching closing time, round it off, even if you're not at the place you envisage you would be, round it off and come to a conclusion, maybe with a final activity or a final question and answer session. Students, though, they remember what they do during sessions. If they sit and listen, they'll probably remember for about five or ten minutes. But if that's all they do, concentration will wane. It's useful to have a number of different episodes in any session so that they are doing or thinking different things and, if possible, talking to each other. Actually arguing, debating, making a decision, comparing with their neighbours and then returning to plenary. The more different things you can get students to do, the more variety they have and the faster time will go for them. A successful session is very often one where people think, oh, I've only just come in and here I am, we're finished. That's the sort of session they'll come to again as well. And finally, make the targets clear. Any good story has a beginning, a middle and an end. And students want stories. They want things where they know where they are in what's going on. So at the start of a session, it's good to show them what the intended outcomes are just for that particular session, and then to link those outcomes to the major outcomes of the course or module. And from time to time during the session, maybe tick off the intended outcomes, so we're now on the second of three outcomes, etc., etc., so they still know that it's going to plan. As you're coming to deal with the last intended outcome, make it clear that you're doing this, 
But before stopping, summarize all of them again. Summarize the targets. It really helps to say a word or two about what the evidence of achievement of these targets might be. The sorts of things students might be asked in an exam or an assignment that link to that particular lecture on that particular day. If students know that what has happened in the last few minutes has been part of the plan to help them get ready for assessment, they're all the more aware how important the occasion has been.